Welcome back, I'm Rob Lang and this is my game Clomper. You live inside a mechanical ladybird called a Clomper, which you can control by laying pipes to power machines with steam. The outside world is a hellscape that you explore from inside the Clomper, picking up resources and completing quests. If that sounds like fun, like and subscribe for more. This one's all about multiplayer testing and there's an announcement at the end of it. If you've been following along for a while, you'll be astounded. Stick around for that. Am I done yet? Well, everything moved over to NGO and Mirror is finally gone. I took out fake Mirror stub classes and cleaned up the last bits and I was free. Free! Free! Except I wasn't. I'm now bound by testing, and in multiplayer the only testing that's worthwhile is with lag, and lag highlighted a few problems. Before we get on to what, let's look at how. Make a big list of features in your game so that you can keep focused. Test things once and don't miss anything. I use a Trello card template. It's free, it just works. Quite often you need the game window on your screen twice. Sizer is a free Windows tool that lets you arrange them on any keybind. Control Z for me gives this little window and I can choose host over here, client over there. Now I can see both easily. Also handy for making YouTube videos. For the Unity IDE I want to snap to a large part of the screen. Windows has snapping built in but it splits the screen in half. To keep things simple I want to have my main IDE big while another ID is a copy, and just enough that I can see game state. Windows Power Toys has loads of cool features, but in particular, you can set snap regions. On the left, I have my main IDE that the debugger is attached to, usually the client. On the right, I have the clone, usually the host. If you find that the Unity layout is a bit cluttered on the narrow side, you can use Unity layouts to arrange the windows. For me, the right hand side usually has less in it. To get client and host IDs running at the same time, I use Parallel Sync, which makes a clone of your project and keeps it up to date. If your computer has enough oomph to run Unity twice, this is invaluable as you can run one as host and one as client and see the game state in both IDEs. When testing client and host on the same computer, there's no lag. That's going to hide a lot of problems that your players will see when playing for real. Use the free tool Clumsy, set a lag of at least 300 milliseconds, which is roughly between West Coast USA and Europe, and press start. To hammer home the point, here's a pipe creating without lag. The pipe appears almost immediately. Then I add lag of 300 milliseconds and hit start. When I click to create the pipe and hold down the mouse button, you see it's transparent. When I let go now, it takes 600 milliseconds before the pipe appears. That makes it very laborious to lay long line of pipes. I've not fixed this problem yet, but it's next to do. NGO has multiplayer tools where you can see lots of network stats. Here you can see the round trip time, RTT, of 600 milliseconds. I'm still learning how to use this tool effectively, so I'll report back when I know more. How do you keep the effects of lag to a minimum? In the case of handles, when the player clicks the handle, a message runs off to the server to say, I want to turn the handle to here. At the same time, it triggers the animation locally, so the player sees no lag. In multiplayer speak, that's called prediction, because the client is guessing that it's going to be okay to turn the handle. The server then checks that the handle can be turned and then tells all the clients, including the one that turned the handle, where the handle should be pointing. For the client that turned the handle, that's likely to be the same place that the handle already is, so nothing happens. If the server thinks the handle should be in a different place, then the client will need to change itself. That might look a little weird to the player, but this can happen when another player turns the handle first too. It's sort of normal for multiplayer games to see these effects. In multiplayer speak, this is called reconciliation. 
Anything that the player directly interacts with should have prediction and reconciliation if you want that feeling of snappiness and no lag. So now some big announcements for you. First of all, I have a new Twitter account. I'm posting lots more stuff to it than I did my personal one, so check out at the Clomper on Twitter if it still exists. Link below. Also, I'm delighted to announce that only after three years, I now have a Discord. It's a great way to ask questions, give feedback, and see sneaky peeks on things not ready for Twitter or YouTube. Come and hang out. I promise it's not just me moaning about multiplayer all day. Link below. I hope to do some streaming now that family life is settling down. Fingers crossed for that one. Thanks all for getting involved. I'll see you on the Discord. Until next time, bye-bye.